ziehen. We have seen that rights have not always been a part of the social being. Rights had to be fought for and acquired. And we must never forget that. That there were times when the social being was a slave, was a serf, was a subjugated person without rights. And socialization was designed to give that social being the identity of an inferior person. So when we talk about social transformation, we're talking about the socialization process. How do you nurture the human being? Is the ideas that you give the person and the way of life that nurtures the ideas <clears throat> that makes the person the person. If the way of life creates society into monarchs and subjects, then the ideas will nurture the mentality of the person who hails from the family of the monarch and as a result builds that person to have a conception of life of himself, herself and others based on the socialization process. It's the same thing if the person hails from the family of the subjects, then the socialization process inculcates ideas and value, which, when nurtured, makes the person see others from that framework. You can actually nurture a person to accept subjugation and be a slave. So self-determination required the transformation of the Gambian person to become a sovereign person. That requires education. Education starts within the family setup. This is where the person first gains ideas about himself, herself, and about others. The Gambia went through a whole historical process without the Gambian family transforming to know that its role is now to bring up a sovereign person. So it's therefore very essential. As someone has said, for those who are given the responsibility to manage the affairs of society, to begin from that level that they are, to give the type of socialization that is necessary and create the environment for those families so that they will be able to take charge of their responsibility of helping to nurture the sovereign Gambian person. Doi's aim is precisely to do that. It is to ensure 
that the media is utilized effectively to help the families to understand their role and be able to carry. The socialization process aims to give values, knowledge, and character to the person who ultimately will be the guardian of a sovereign republic. So society at all times must be engaged with that sovereign person from the cradle to the grave. So it therefore means that the institutions that will be created, the instruments that will be created, the practices that will be carried out will be geared towards nurturing that sovereign person. So we know that that sovereign person must be a producer. We know that sovereign person must be a decision maker. We know that sovereign person could even preside over the affairs of a state. So that sovereign person, therefore, must be prepared to assume responsibilities of running a society. And that is why formal institutions would have to be created to support the family so that the socialization process could be continuous. There will be no break. And if we look at the issue of education, it is one of the key tools that gives support to the family in order to nurture the person to become sovereign citizen who owns the country and is ready to contribute one quarter to the development of the country. Currently, we have 329,000 children in our primary school. 94,000 in our upper basic schools. And 56,000 in our high schools. So if you add that together, it's over 400,000. Every 12 years, those people are going to come out. And they will be citizens above 18 with the right to vote. But they will also be looking for a means of existence, a roof to put over their head. Society must prepare for these people who will now have to produce the next generation, nurture them so that they can inherit the world after them. The question is, what have we done to really prepare such a generation. Not in the First Republic, not in the Second Republic. And of course, the plan is yet to be there, even today, to prepare such a generation. So it is essential, therefore, for Doi to look at the future educational system that must be put in place if we are going to achieve our aim. First and foremost, when you talk about education, you are talking about transferring knowledge, skills, character, and values. <clears throat> what type of knowledge do we need? What type of skills? What type of values? That is why we started with the whole process 
of civil, political, and economic transformation. The transformation we talk about is to create the self-determined person, the sovereign person, who would be able to build a self-determined republic. So in that sense, the educational system must be able to empower the sovereign Gambian child with the knowledge and values that will make the person democratic and have the values of building a republic. So it means that first and foremost, that citizen must begin to move away from all prejudices that divides the people. The sovereign Gambian citizen must become a part of a people, must grow up as part and parcel of a people. And the home must be prepared for that. But the school environment is the best instrument of doing that. So we're talking about then a curriculum that must be prepared. And from early childhood up to any stage, education for citizenship must be a primary preoccupation of the education system. Education for citizenship. The learning materials must be produced. The teachers must be prepared for that. So that no single Gambian can go up to 18 years without knowing one's history and knowing one's rights and knowing one's role. Not knowing one's constitution, one's laws, one's institutions, and the role one is to play in determining who manages the affairs of the land. That must be a primary preoccupation of the educational system. It means that the person is also being prepared to occupy a given division of labor in society. So it means the potential of the individual must be identified so that above the basic, and basic means citizenship education must be grounded and the tools to be able to enter into other areas of life must be grounded. And then the person prepared for what role he or she is going to occupy in society in the future. The educational system must bridge the gap between knowledge acquisition and knowledge application. It must bridge the gap between knowledge acquisition and knowledge application. You are learning to be able to apply it to transform reality, not learning for learning's sake. So it is therefore important, if you look at the literature of the Pan-Africanists, the first Pan-African Congress in Paris, you look at the declaration. They have said that in terms of education, not only so that we do not separate technical knowledge from academic knowledge, which is the case with our educational system. It's more theory rather than how do you apply what you've learned. So it means that the educational system must serve both purposes to have universal conception in terms of how to manage one's life is education for the person to be able to live. It means that what you call home economics and all 
how the person should manage a home, live in a home, run a home, do everything that is necessary to be self-reliant, must be taught. And the education system must convey those values <laughs> so that you are preparing somebody for life. That is absolutely essential. So it is also important for the educational system to move further, to help the person to understand the world, the continent, the world as a whole. So the educational system must prepare the universal human being who can live with others at home and others in the world at large. To be able to build such an educational system and sustain it, the starting point is an epic institution. We need an academy for natural and social science where we absorb those who have made greatest contribution in each sector of development. So that they can serve as experts who can guide curriculum development, literature writing, so that a whole educational system will have materials produced at home by minds capable of guiding and use other literatures to supplement and expand their universal knowledge and values. So that is absolutely essential. Otherwise, we are totally dependent on importation of books, importation of learning materials. So the educational system, since it is based on self-determination, means that within the educational system we must reproduce those people capable of sustaining the development of the country as a whole. So it means that you can have teachers who are teaching carpentry but also in the separate schools giving contracts to be able to make chairs for the school, so that the school will be self-reliant and the state will provide the resources. So the institutions can be made to be productive where some will be appointed to be producers whilst at the same time, you know, key people doing the teaching and the children will come and learn. <laughs> This becomes absolutely essential in order to move forward to take charge of the educational system. So it's not only enough to say that education is free, it should be affordable and accessible, and it is a right under Section 30 of the Constitution. It is a right. Basic education should be free and compulsory. But is that what is being exercised? And what is that freedom? Do you have the learning material? Do you have the libraries? Do you have the trained teachers? Are they, do you have the curriculum which is really responsive to the development of the human person to make him uh, an independent social being, a sovereign social being? Well, they aims to address those challenges, to put the ideas across, the policies across, so that we create that type of environment that will ultimately lead to the development of a Gambian child into adulthood who will occupy a division of Libyan society and contribute generally to the prosperity of the country. We start from early childhood, primary, secondary, tertiary, and other institutional transformation. 
so that natural science, social science <coughs> will be common to all Gambians. They will have a basic on all that and then move forward. It is important when we look at the social sectors <coughs> that they are linked to what enable the Gambian to live a normal life, a prosperous life, as dictated by Section 1, Subsection 2, general welfare. What do we consider as welfare? It means we must look at the Labor Act. We must look at the conditions of all producers and make sure that they earn what is required to be able to raise normal families and provide for them. That must be a primary occupation. The battle for income, adequate for quality living, is a major objective of the social sector. And we must work for that. And the social sector will require the establishment or empowerment of trade unions so that they can guarantee the welfare of the workers. Farmers' unions to guarantee the welfare of farmers. Different social organizations so that they can contribute to the welfare of the different groups. These social organizations, organized groups of sovereign people, would serve as key instruments for the for policy formulation of government. Government will always consult them in their different sectors so as to be able to know exactly what the sectors are demanding and respond to those demands. So the social sector will require not only social instruments, social legislation, but it will also require social institutions, civil society organizations that take part and participate in the governance environment as partners. That is absolutely essential. It will develop youth organizations, gender organizations, all forms in all domains so that they help in that sector. These social organizations will not only be making recommendations to government, but they can also be empowered to take part in the provision of social services, to supplement social services emerging from the government sector. In short, we will look at the issue from this angle. First, we have seen education. We must go to health and see that you have primary health care, secondary health care, tertiary health care, in order to be able to have referral hospitals so that in each region you must have the components of primary health care secondary health care with district hospitals, and tertiary health care with uh, referral hospitals in the regional headquarters. So that in each village, the people will first be educated on the four elements of health. One element is the preventive health. It means that people will be educated to know what gives them good health. The nutrition is needed for good health. The type of exercise is needed for good health. The type of environment needed for good health, mental health. The recreational facilities that are needed for mental sanity. The good human relationship needed for mental sanity. They will be educated to know their minds, their bodies in general. 
and their emotions so that they'll be able to stay healthy. And when they are ill, they'll be entitled to curative health, meaning that in each village there must be a health personnel competent to be able to address the needs of, of the village, competent to be able to document the illnesses that are common in the village, <clears throat> competent to receive the medicaments required to be able to treat those ailments that are common, will be accessible to, to, the, to the population. The population also must be able to be accessible to rehabilitative health, meaning that if they have physical disability, they'll be entitled to the type of massages that are necessary, type of equipments that are necessary for them to be able to uh, uh, maintain the, the type of uh, uh, comportment that they are entitled to, such as if you have physical disability and you need uh, orthopedic facilities, that should be available. Uh, you need a wheelchair, that should be available. So whatever category of ailment you have, there should be the facility that rehabilitates you so that you'll be able to live normal life and, and uh, uh, counsel you so that you can adjust to, to, to disabilities. And then there is also the restorative health. There are some people who can be uh, terribly marked uh, because of leprosy, because of all the illnesses that they will require, you know, plastic surgery or whatever. So the referral hospitals should be able to move to that level that they can actually restore at least a part of a body of a person and at least restore the person to what uh, the person would have best uh, accepted uh, as an appearance. So in short, the health system must be built to be able to serve this type of categories. And we know that currently many people leave this country to go to even the neighboring country mm -hmm. for many of these facilities uh, which if you look at it, the investment that is required uh, is, is available. In most of these equipments that they go and, 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 and resort to, and you look at what I have quantified, what is expected to be received, the 400 million, 300 million, you know, all these millions, obviously that should be able to provide us with these different equipments in the regions, etc., to be able to guarantee some of these this health facilities. It means also that we must move into the issue of training building our training institutions. Training at the level of education, and it must be free. If education is to be free, the training of the teacher must be free. If health is to be free, the training of the health personnel must be free. So it means that we must train them so that they can serve society. And we must train as large a number of people as possible to be able to carry on such responsibilities. We then move to the issue of housing. That the sovereign person would also need housing. If you look at the rural areas, most people live in dilapidated houses if we wish to call them that, or shanties. And if we look at the urban area, many people are living in very congested environments. And most will tell you rent is going beyond their capacity to sustain. So ultimately, many people just stay in one place for three months and then have to move again. So they are beginning to move like the, the hearts men and women who used to move from place to place. Many people are moving from place to place because of incapacity to pay rent. So it is important to address this problem and do I intend to address this problem. 
DOE is very convinced that the cooperative housing scheme is applicable. And institutions of the state must move towards that. Local government institutions must move, or regional government institutions must move towards that type of housing scheme, where people will be provided with apartments and they will pay it on a monthly basis until they finish the payment and take ownership of those places. We are convinced that that is the way forward. And we are convinced that when the productive base improves, it will not be a burden to those people because you will improve their earning capacity, their salaries, to a point that what they, the increment will be serving to go to pay their housing schemes. In the rural areas also, we are talking about family farm. And when they build in capacity, they can also be encouraged to invest in cooperative housing so that that also will improve their living condition. We'll also be able to guide those who already have the capacity but do not realize that they have the capacity to improve their living conditions. Just yesterday, we were talking about that, me and the administrative sector, that you have people owning up to 1,000 cattle. And 1,000 cattle, even if the cattle is uh, multiplied by uh, 20,000 for the cattle, you can imagine how many millions that is. So in essence, those people can be assisted even if they join a cooperative scheme. And the cattle will yield a cattle every, every year, one, even if it is one. Even if 10 cattle, one year, you are talking about 200,000. That can build a very good facility without eroding their heart. And that is, that is what DOI intends to do. We say people-centered development. You will go to the people, see their capacity, and you guide them to be able to improve their living conditions. So in short, we are confident that we can help all those people engage in productive ventures to be able to improve their housing conditions and therefore reduce the congestion. There is a law of social science that we will be applying to deal with the social sector. It emphasizes that without a balanced and proportionate development of town and country, you will always have rural urban drift. So the only way to prevent rural urban drift is to ensure that there is balanced and proportionate development of town and country. So it means that our major focus would be to ensure that development takes place in the country in a balanced and proportionate way. And this must be done scientifically and also uh, with determination so that it happens strategically. And we believe that this will ease many congestions and facilitate greater social development. We've also seen the need to move into the whole area of leisure that generally there is no planning for people to have recreation. So we must ensure that in all planning of villages, there will be centers for leisure, sports, etc., all forms of recreation, uh, housing for uh, looking at uh, television, listening to community radio, etc., etc., etc. People where they can meet, have drama, discuss, uh, community discussion about families. So there must be a village, as it was a bantaba, now there must be 
a facility built conducive for all those activities to take place in the village, in the community, in the district, and so on. So that becomes absolutely essential in the whole process of integrating our people into the development process of the country. It is going to be necessary to move into infrastructure, and this leisure means that we must transform our environment to be a leisure environment. If there are waterways, etc., all that must be taken into consideration uh, to facilitate uh, the enjoyment of the environment by the people themselves. Now we go into uh, the cultural transformation. As the new Gambian emerges, uh, the way of life of that new Gambian will reflect a new culture, because culture is the way of life of a people. And culture is not static, it is dynamic process. So it means that we start with the sovereign person, and that sovereign person is conscious of not harm being done to him or her, and having right to one's body, to one's reproductive health, so with that understanding of the individual, you do not need to indoctrinate the person or push the person in any way. The person knows that this is the type of life I want for myself and for my benefit, for my betterment. So it means that that understanding of the person, that socialization of the person from early age will also get rid of all these things that we talk about gender violence, discrimination, oppression of any sort, because the socialization process is creating a new way of life which will be reinforced by a new relation so that by the consciousness of that person, you will see that non-consensual sex would be outrageous to the person because you do not want you, with all your dignity, to go to that level of being seen to that low level, which means that you'll be able to control who you are and relate to people the way you want to relate to them. You will own yourself. And that is absolutely essential in, in the process of uh, bringing up a new culture. And that is what, is what is necessary for people to mutually respect each other and relate on the basis that is consensual. So we move to the cultural relics that must be transformed, the music, the drama, the, the, the plays, every aspect, sports, every aspect that reinforces relation between people and moving to build a society of happiness. Uh, those will be reinvented and pushed into the direction for them to serve their purpose. We go into the ecological, because the social and the uh, cultural are interlinked because of all the facilities that we said will all reinforce in building a new way of life for the Gambian people. The ecological dimension calls for the Gambian, new Gambian, to be in harmony with the environment in which he or she lives. We already have environmental management acts and they're supposed to create the possibility of ensuring that environmental impact assessment in dawn before you build buildings, before you build industries, before you do farming, before you do anything in any part of the country. We are supposed to look at the quality of water, quality of soil, what is ideal for every, 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 every area. So all this will be necessary, which means that the science of knowing our environment will be encouraged and will be part of the curriculum at the earliest level so that people will know how to preserve the environment. That is absolutely essential. And 
we will send in the councils, both at the national and the, uh, the, the committees at the, at the village level, at the district level, so that everybody will at least participate in environmental education. And this leads us to the whole issue of how we use the environment. Waste management will be key. And how we can transform waste into resource will be key. So that waste will not go to pollute and destroy our environment. It will now be recycled so that it will continue to sustain our development. And therefore, we will start to educate people to understand what comes from them. And they will manage it in the first place. And what needs to be managed by the councils, what needs to be managed by the national government will also be identified and they will provide the facilities that will lead you to take it where it should be taken so that they will manage it in the right way and move towards utilizing it for the general uh, development of the country. So we are talking about a conscious Gambian who through urban and rural planning, through proper education of how to deal with the environment, and through proper facilities, we'll be able to have drainage, sewage, better road conditions, better planning of, of, of energy, and ensuring that waste management, both liquid and solid waste, will be done in such a way that they will not harm uh, the, 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 the people. This is the DOI agenda at the civil, cultural, and ecological level. And we hope that the debate will enable us to elucidate or learn from you so that we can expand the agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right on time. So now you can summarize. We have left a proposal from your side, or it has been discussed at the central committee level. If it is not um, yet discussed at central um, committee level, I will suggest that you should give a very long notice um, for the diaspora so that also they can prepare themselves in order to adequately represent um, their respective branches and chapters um, from Europe. And also to prepare them because um, the diaspora definitely do um, play some vital roles in financial support and also representation. Um, I don't know. Um, yes. uh